Shalom, first and foremost, giving all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kudash. Double honors to the apostle and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Yeah, seeing this, uh, it came out during the Super Bowl, but I didn't see it till later, or at least for me. This uh, trailer called uh, Nope by uh, another movie by Jordan Peele. He was the same guy that made the Get Out and the uh, Among Us, I think it was, or something Us. It had some black chick with a, like a mask of her face on it. I forgot. But he was the one that made those two mo uh, movies, notably Get Out. And uh, as you can see here, you know, like the saying goes, truth in plain sight. You know, Esau Edom puts, you know, what they know is in the scriptures right there in front of the people's face. And people eat it up, you know. Now, the movie is called Nope, and you see it has a cloud. And, you know, the scriptures refer to the chariots as clouds. They refer to them as uh, uh, a whirlwind. They refer to them as, uh, they're called chariots as well. And, you know, the thing that I don't understand with people is that when you tell people that these things that you watch in movies, such as, you know, like this movie here, it's going into the chariots when you watch the trailer. Lord's one, I don't get a copyright strike, but if I do, oh, well. I just wanted to bring out some edification on this because this is truth right here in plain sight. This is right from the scriptures. And like I say, we tell you, the prophets tell you that, look, these things are in the scriptures. And people will look at you like you have a million heads, like you are you like you belong in the psych ward or something. But then they'll watch these movies and they'll enjoy them and be like, yeah, this is so cool. And when we tell you that these things are in the scriptures, you look at us crazy. We're telling you that the same things that you watch in movies, these, you know, lesser luminaries, these movie directors, they get all their inspiration from the scriptures. We'll tell you that Godzilla's in the scriptures, except it's just called Leviathan. You'll look at us crazy. But then you'll watch Godzilla versus Kong. We tell you that Behemoth is in the scriptures or, you know, dinosaurs are in the scriptures. They're just called Behemoth. You look at us crazy. But then you go watch Jurassic Park. We tell you that the end of the world has happened. All these calamities are going to happen. You look at this crazy and you say, oh, we're madmen. But then you go watch movies like uh, 2012. The, uh, what was the other? Uh, what was it? There was 2012. Uh, there was another movie called San Andreas with The Rock. You know, these end of the world movies, Independence Day. We tell you that these things that you watch in, um, uh, that you watch in movies, these things are actually going to happen. Even movies like The Dark Knight. Uh, what was it? I think I believe it was in the Dark Knight Rises when they started raiding the city, when Bane let loose the uh, the prisoners and they start raiding the city. That's gonna happen. Civil unrest. We tell you these things are gonna happen. The same thing that you watch in the movie that you think is so cool. We tell you these th these things are gonna happen in real life, and as you look at it as crazy. But then you watch the movie with so much awe. I I don't understand that, but hey, you know, blindness. And uh, I was reading Isaiah's 60th chapter a little bit earlier. And just to start off with that precept. Because they know, these elites know that what, uh, they know the truth. In order to lie, you got to know the truth, like the apostles always say. So they, they put this stuff out there for your entertainment to make money. Basically, they're money, making money off the scriptures, you know. And you watch it for entertainment, not knowing that these events, you know, these things that you watch in movies are going to happen in real time. These things are going to happen in our days. So it says, Isaiah 60 and 8. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? I'll read that one more time. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 8. Who are these that fly as a cloud? And as the doves to their windows. And don't you see that right here? A cloud. And that's talking about the chariots. Like I said earlier, the chariots can represent a cloud. It tells you that I'll get that precept as well. It was a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day that followed us after we left Egypt. What was that cloud? It was a chariot. And Yahweh Shah was in that chariot. Paul tells you that, if I'm not mistaken, in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, that that cloud that followed us was Yahweh Shah. So here it is. See, they know what's in the scriptures and they put it out again for you, the, the masses, to eat it up as entertainment. But these things are actually biblical events. These things actually happen. Was that saying uh, imitation is the greatest form of flattery, if I'm not mistaken, if that's how it goes? 
but uh just gonna go uh you know uh, go through the trailer bring out some precepts and lord willing this is edifying for anybody that may be new or just for upliftment that you know are matter of fact let me get that actually And spiritual that this movie is coming out, Lord's will, well, let me not say Lord's will, but if it be the Lord's will that this year continues any longer, that uh, uh, that this movie is coming out uh, this year. I think at the end of the trail it says 7, uh, 722. So if this year permits any longer, you know, we'll see what this movie is about. <clears throat> but as this is the year of the turn up, you know, with all these things happening. Uh, I'm not mistaken. No, I passed it. Right, this is Romans chapter 13, verse 11. And that knowing the time that is now... Slucky. And knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep for our salvation... For, uh, slucky. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Right. And even these elites are showing that our salvation is near. They're making movies about the chariots. But yet, you see, with them, they put the movie as nope. Because for Esau, Edom, this is, they don't want this. They don't want the chariots to come back. Because this is a sign of the end of their kingdom. And even two-thirds. Because you had a, uh, what, I forgot that chick's name. But I think she was Akila and, the, Akila and the Bee, that chick, whatever her name is. A Kiki Palmer, that's her name. I'm sorry, I don't really focus on uh, famous people. Um, she uh, she at the end of the trailer, you're going to see it, was like, oh, hell nah. And she was like, run. But yeah, that's how people are going to be. People, the two-thirds and the, uh, you know, the elites, the Edomites and the other nations, when they see these things, they're going to be gazing like, oh, well, hell no. That's why the movie is called Nope. No, because they don't want this to come back. But we... Because we seek salvation, we hope and pray that we are, <laughs> this thing takes it up for us. No, this is a yes. Hell yeah, yes, we want this thing to come because we want salvation. But for the Edomites and the two-thirds, like the movie says, nope, no, we don't want this thing to come back. Because they want to live in wickedness. We want to live in righteousness. We seek the kingdom. They've already gotten their consolation on this side. So they don't want their, their, their fun to end. They want to keep living in wickedness, even though... Our people don't have nothing on this side. We know that there's nothing here for us. That's how we feel about the world. Nope. That's how we feel. Nope. We want this. You want America to continue? Nope. We want this place to go. We want this place to go yesterday, last year. But let's uh, play through the trailer, bring out some precepts. Like I said, Lord's will just be out of fun. And that's how it's going to be when your house shot comes back. You people, you know, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. That's how you people going to be. You're going to be enjoying your time, even though there's going to be other chaos. But you think that joining yourself to Esau is going to make you safe. You think that, you know, the society is going to flourish or whatever. But that's how your house shot is going to come down. He's going to take off everybody. He's going to shut down the lights. He's going to take off everything and make you focus on him. Like the scriptures say, and I'm going to bring out that piece as well, that all eyes shall see him. You're not going to be focusing on the, the, the things of this world. Yahweh Shah is going to shut this place down real quick. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is going to shut this place down. So all the fun and games is soon about to be, uh, soon about to end.
boom and you see that and that's exactly what the scriptures liken the chariots unto see he's seeing the chariot and this is what ezekiel saw in the first chapter when you read ezekiel the first chapter this is what ezekiel saw ezekiel saw the chariot and he saw that the uh the beings that came out of them was the angels but just like everything esau always has to demonize this truth or he has to make you know the truth in some way he has to make you think that either he has to demonize it or he has to you know make it something demonic or something that it's not you know because you have the chariots but they call them the ufos there are angels in there but they call them uh uh they call them a uh, aliens are in there uh men with uh green men with big eyes and all that but the, you had some edomites come out and said no there's black men and they're big tall black men inside those things that came out and said that you have the story of the uh is it the black jesus i think it was where it was the angel that came down and he's like you know there's going to be others like me and when the time comes you won't be able to stop us Man, even just talking about this stuff is just giving me chills, man. It's 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 fear, but at the same time, it's also excitement, because that's the power of the Lord. That's the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. You see things like this. This is what He's gonna come with. It, a numerable amount of chariots, a numerable amount of angels. I, I, all the angels is gonna pull up on that day. There's not gonna be an angel in heaven. Every single angel. Is going to pull up with Yahweh Shah. There's not, everybody is going to be there for this day. And Esau, you got to deal with all of this, baby boy. So get ready. Because this is what you want. You want to act like the big man? Okay. Well, what's that saying? Ray Lewis used to say if he uh, played football, I think he used to say, uh, I apologize if I'm wrong, but I think it was big time players make big time plays in big time games well this is big time for you Esau so you got to show up because it's all on you you want your kingdom you got to fight for it and you got to fight against the king of kings and lord of lords Yahweh Shai Hamashiach so good luck but this is what the prophets they saw this is what Zechariah saw and it shall enter the house of the thief who's the thief Esau he stole us and that's what you're seeing right now aren't we seeing chariots in these days so Esau is just confirming it. Like the scriptures say, you can do nothing against the truth, but uh, for the truth. So although Esau is putting out, bringing out these movies and things like that, like that these lesser illuminaries, <clears throat> all you're doing is helping us to explain like, oh, okay, well, you see that what you're seeing in the movie there? That's written about in the scriptures. So while you think you may be demonizing the truth, making people sit there and think that it's just entertainment, that it's just folly, you're just helping us to bring out extra edification. So thank you, Esau. But as you can see, that's what uh, the prophet saw, like I was saying. Matter of fact, let me get a precept to back that up. This is what, uh, matter of fact, uh, hmm. yeah, I'll bring it up. So this is when we uh, left Egypt. This is Exodus chapter 13, verse 21. And Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead, the, uh, to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. And that, ch that was basically a chariot. And like I said earlier, the chariots can be likened unto clouds they can be likened unto whirlwinds so that was the chariot that was a fire by a uh, fire by night and a cloud by day that followed the people and led them through the wilderness that protected them and when uh the egyptians came pharaoh and the egyptians came what it stood between uh israel and the, uh, and the egyptians and it was a light unto us but it was darkness to them and, and one of the, uh, I guess, the generals of Pharaoh said, let's leave the Israelites alone for Yahweh fight it for them. But, excuse me, apologies. 
But Pharaoh, you know, the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. He's like, nah, I'm chase after them. So like the Lord said, he will get me honor up, uh, upon Pharaoh. And that's the same thing that the Lord's going to do. He's going to get honor upon Esau. He's going to heighten Esau so much. And he's going to get honor uh, from taking down Esau. Because Esau seems like a god right now. He seems invincible. But that's what the Heavenly Father wants. To seem like you can't take these people down. And then what? He's going to send back his son, Yahweh with the army and the elect. He's going to, uh, you know, give his elect those new bodies. And what? That's how the Heavenly Father is going to get his honor. And his son's going to get that honor. And then what? Jerusalem, which is the people, Yasha Allah is also going to get that honor. That's how the Lord's name is going to be magnified, just like it was magnified after Egypt. When the Lord made that great, uh, when he saved us by a mighty hand, when he opened up the, well, the, in the scripture says the Gulf of, uh, I'm sorry, in the scripture says the Red Sea, but it's the Gulf of Suez. When he opened that up, and then we went, uh, we went through by uh, dry land, and then what, it swallowed up the Egyptians? You no, know, the fame, the, the name of Yahweh was magnified that day. So how much this day, when, like I said earlier, yeah, his, the King of Kings comes back, the Lord of Lords comes back, and all the angels come back in just power and great glory. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and then what? They just, you just see the, this, the, the great destruction that he brings. He just levels America to nothing. Just complete destruction. The chariots, chariots shooting down laser beams. The missiles hitting this place. He beams up the elect before they get destroyed. Gives them the new bodies. And like it says, in the blink of an eye, all that greatness is going to happen on that day. That's when the name of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah is going to be magnified. And you're going to know who destroyed this place. You're going to know who saved his people uh, out of the north country by the mighty hand this time. You're going to know who it was that destroyed America. You're going to know who brought your kingdom down to nothing. It was Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, just like he brought down Egypt. Ancient Egypt, he's going to bring down modern Egypt. See, and that's, see, Esau always has to make this seem like it's some spooky stuff. And, you know, they, they do, you know, because it's, it's not just, you know, trying to make, because how you make things spooky, you got to give it a dark, you know, uh, a surrounding, you know, they always got to make the animals freak out. Because, you know, animals, you know, have that. They can sense things that we can't sense. So you got to make it seem like it's something evil, but it's not evil. This is our redemption. This is our, our way out. You know, this is the way we, you know, get Lord's going to get saved from the destruction that's coming for the ultimate destruction. This is going to be mass destruction happens, you know, but that final plague, that final destruction, that this is our way, you know, out of that is up into the into the cloud. And Esau has to make it seem like it's something demonic and evil. And it's not evil. It's not demonic. This is it's holy. It's it's. You know, it's it's righteous, man. But, you know, a precept for this, because as you can see, these people are looking up or they're trying to see whatever it is. This is Revelation chapter one, verse seven. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. Right. Don't you see that right now? Look, look. You see these people, uh, you see I'm looking? And this guy just said, what's a bad miracle? You know, because see, he's demonizing it. He has to make it seem like it's evil. But this is a miracle. This is going to be the miracle of how we get delivered out of this destruction that's coming. How else are you going to escape 200 million warheads pelting America? How are you going to escape the beast of destruction? Joel, if I'm not mistaken, it talks about like how it's going to just, you know, just cover the land. Just uh, I, I like how the sun rises and how uh, when the sun rises, the, sh the light of the sun spreads across all the uh, mountains. That's how the mist is going to be. It's going to spread everywhere. It's not going to miss nowhere. But here you heard him say uh, he if you can hear it, say it because uh, 
uh, something's up with my microphone. It doesn't really catch the audio, so I apologize. It hears my voice, but it doesn't catch the audio. So if you hear it or not, I apologize about that. But the guy who played in Get Out, he said, uh, was, is there such a thing as a bad miracle? You know, you got to demonize it, make it seem evil when it's not. Then, of course, he might go the route of the whole aliens. There's aliens because you kind of see something later on the trailer looking kind of weird. And, you know, they always got to make it seem evil. Uh, aliens that come in to destroy the planet, take us over. Nah. But Esau really knows who's coming to take over. The king of kings, Yahweh Shah. See, and you see all the, I guess those were like plush toys or whatever. But those plush toys, hold on, let's run that back real quick. I'm not sure if those were skulls or if those were uh, owls. No, those look like, those look like skulls, right? And that's what Yahweh is coming to do. He's coming, he's, uh, he says, I shall stay in all my raiment. The slain of the Lord shall be many. <clears throat> and see, that's what Esau shows you. He shows you that in movies. So he tries to be a prophet, a prophet on the left-hand side. See all those skulls right there? What does that represent? And you have the chariots coming. The chariot shows up, and then you have these plush toys with uh, skulls on them. What do you think that represents? The slain of the Lord shall be many. Because there's going to be a lot of people that die in that nuclear fire. <coughs> see? Well, let's go back to, as you can see, I just want, this is the picture I really want to get, or the image. As you can see, everybody's looking up. Nobody's focusing on the things of life no more. Come on, Blue, I stop acting foolish. Right, this is Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And, eat, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even, even so Amun. Right, and that's what you're seeing right now. Every eye shall see him. When Yahweh turns back with those chariots, and, then, uh, and that army of the angels with him, with those chariots, like you're seeing, let me play it, let me capture uh, See, now, Slack, I couldn't get it again, but you saw everybody, I'm guessing it's at a, a rodeo game or whatever. They're all looking up. That's the every eye shall see him. You even see the camera looking up too. So even the, however it may be, technology, everything, like Apostle Tar says, everything is going to stop on that day. Everything is going to be looking at the Son of Man, Yahweh Shai, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. That's when everything's going to stop. Ain't nobody going to be worrying about what they're doing. Everybody going to be looking up at him. And we gonna be a Lord's one. We endure to them. We gonna be looking up at Him too, saying, "Lord, have mercy." And Bob Shah prayed, "I'm of the elect. Please beam me up," or whatever we might say. But other people, it's gonna. Some people might die from seeing Him back. Oh, that's Him that they was talking about. Because everybody at that day is then gonna realize those guys wasn't crazy. Those guys was actually telling the truth. I mean, people know that, but you know. They hope in their mind that they're, were, that we're incorrect, but people know. And that's when everybody going to say, oh, that's who you was talking about? That yeah, That's Yahweh Shai? Oh, okay. Because you see, a name has reputation. When you think of JC, when you think of Jesus Christ, you think of, you know, the so-called white man, the so-called white image that you see. And you see, and you think of, oh, he's here to save everybody and he loves everybody. But we preach to you Yahweh Shai HaMashiach that only died for the nation of Israel. When you have understanding of the scriptures, it tells you that he's an austere man. It tells you what? That when he comes back, like I quoted, the slain of the Lord shall be many. It tells you that in uh, Isaiah, I'm sorry, not Isaiah, the 14th chapter, Revelation, the 14th chapter, when it's just uh, the wine press of the Most High. Now, you know, when you uh, go into the wine press, how you would stomp the grapes and all that. So that's what the Most High is going to do. He's going to gather the clusters. Matter of fact, let's go there real quick. I don't want to butcher it.
See? All right, let's start at 14. We might jump down a little bit. Revelation 14 and 14. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and, his, and in his hand a sharp sickle. See? So that white cloud, I believe in Revelation 19, also says a white horse. Now that horse is also talking about the chariot. Because a horse represents power and white represents purity. So pure power that he's coming in. It doesn't mean that he's going to actually come on a horse. But what? A horse represents a vehicle that you would come on. So the chariot represents also a vehicle that you would use uh, when he comes here. Uh, damn, what was that other priest that I was thinking about? Uh, there was something. Uh, uh, damn it, it escaped my mind. Lord's one, I can remember it. Uh, verse 15, and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the, cl on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the, cl and he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud, and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, "Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for for her grapes are fully ripe." And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into a great winepress of the wrath of the Most High. And the wine press, right, just like how you would gather the clusters of grapes and you throw them in the wine press and you would stomp out the grapes and then what the blood of the grapes would come out. That's what the uh, is, that's what it represents when Yahweh Shai comes back. The slain of the Lord shall be many. And also when the nuclear destruction, because a lot of people are going to die in that nuclear uh, when the nuclear missiles hit America. And the wine press was trodden without the city and blood came out of the wine press even unto the horses' bridles by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. That just means a lot of death is what it basically rep uh, represents. So a lot of things, uh, when the scriptures use these, uh, I'll just for lack of a better sense, saying old terminologies, you know, like the wine press, you have to know about these things because that's how the scriptures speak. It speaks in allegorical ways. And uh, if the spirit is working with you, you can catch these things and understand them. You have to understand the ancient ways uh, to understand, uh, one of the things that helps you understand the scriptures is understanding how things were back then. Back then, we had a vineyard and wine presses, and what you would do, like I explained earlier, with the wine press, is that you would stomp out the grapes, and then you would stomp out the grapes, the blood would come out. So that's basically what the Lord is saying here in the scripture in Revelation 14: is He's likening people unto grapes, and when He destroys them, the blood's gonna come out, representing the death. But people don't understand ancient customs and ancient mannerisms and things like that. So that's why that's another thing that helps. The, uh, that, that's another thing that I wouldn't say help, but that's another thing that uh, makes it uh, hard for them to understand the scriptures because they don't understand ancient ways because our people think that, oh, we're just here with the now. This is modern times, you know, but it's like, no, you, you, if you, uh, scriptures say if you um, uh, roughly paraphrase, I believe it's in Job. Uh, I inqu for inquire, I pray thee for the search of thy father. So if you want to understand what the scriptures are saying, you got to go back, uh, back in time, search history to understand what things mean. Now it's hard for you to see that. And it was really quick as well, but in this image here, I'm going to try to catch it. You can see he's looking up, and you can see the chariot moving swiftly to the left. I wish I could, like, circle it for you can see. But if you see over there to the left on the right-hand side of the screen. No, nah, that won't help doing that. Uh, you can see the chariot's moving. He's looking at it. So you see, these elites know what it is, man. But they put it as entertainment for you to just laugh at it and be like, ah, it's just a movie, man. But you're going to see these things in real time. People already are already are seeing these things and freaking out over about it. So if you see people acting this out and freaking out over it, how much more will you actually see like this happen? And, you know, people going to say, oh, it's UFOs. It's the end of the world and all this weird stuff. No. Nah. Let's 
see, and that's what I was talking about. That that's uh, obviously he saw something that looks like an alien. That's what Esau again has to do. Demonize it. it. Ain't angels. It ain't the angel of the Lord. No, it's aliens and things like that. You know, some Independence Day stuff. Where in the scriptures do you see aliens? And if you do, it's it's talking about foreigners, man. People who are not of the nation of Israel. It's not actual aliens. There's no aliens in the scriptures, man. See that? The cloud in the sky he's looking up at. I try to catch it really well. That's the chariot, man. That's the same thing that uh beamed up uh um if I'm not mistaken, Elijah when Elisha uh, saw him get uh taken up by the whirlwind. So you see these elites know, man. Then that's how you know that they watch us. They they listen to our videos. <coughs> they listen very closely to the things that we say. And they think that they can fight against these things. You even put in your movies that, uh, you know, it's impossible to uh, beat these things. So you think in real life you're actually going to beat that? You're foolish, man. See? And that's what she was like, nah, 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 run. And that's how, you know, these elites are. And that's how two-thirds are going to be. They're going to be like, nah, nah, we don't want nothing to deal with that. <laughs> They're going to look at it as something demonic or they're going to know that in their spirits is like, that's it. That that's, you know, I'm going to die a horrible death. But we're hoping and praying that, you know, when we see how I, you know, pull up in those last days, Lord, when we endure until the end, we're hoping to get beamed up and taken up into the chariot. Because we know what that is. Like I brought out earlier, uh, it's high time to wake out of sleep, roughly paraphrasing for the, uh, for your, for our salvation is nearer than when we believed. And the elites are even showing that. Boom, look at that. You see the shadow of that? And that's what, uh, again, um, Ezra saw in, uh, in Second Ezra, the 13th chapter. He said when he saw Yahweh on the chariot, he said it was like a mountain. And look at the way that thing is just, you would think that that's a mountain in the sky of how it's just following him and he's running away from it. And this is the things that the prophet saw. He said, I, I, I tried to find where it was, you know, the end of it. And he said, I couldn't see the end of it. You know, there was a, the elites, they had like some picture where they showed like the chariot, uh, you know, it was like bigger than the planet. Look at this thing chasing him. Look how small he is compared to that thing. It looks like a mountain's chasing him behind him. And that's what Ezra saw. And that's the end of it. See, that they show it uh, pulling her up in the sky, but they're making it seem like it's something evil. Now, when that thing pu pulls people up in the sky, it's there to deliver. It's there to deliver the elect. Lord's will be, be Lord's will we are a part of that. It's not something evil, man. So don't listen to this white man and him putting these things in his movies, making it seem like uh, these so what they call UFOs or IFOs and things like that. No, they're the chariots of the Lord. They're known as the, in the scriptures. They're known either as the chariots of the Lord, a cloud, a whirlwind, and they're their means for deliverance. And there's many stories in, uh, that uh, there's many stories about the chariots in the scriptures. Where all they've done is the will of the Lord. They've done good. It beamed up uh, Elijah. It took him up into heaven. It uh, was a cloud by uh, a cloud by day and a, fi a pillar of fire by night for us when we left Egypt. Is the, does that sound evil to you? But of course, this man got to come out here and make this thing seem evil. But you know, like I said, I don't want to go rambling on. But you know, the answers are in the scriptures, man. But this, if you go around listening to this, man, you're never going to get no edification. You're never going to find any, you're never going to get any answers listening to this, man. This man is just here to just dumb you down and make you stay in fear. And this is another ploy of fear to just make you fear. Oh, when you see these things, be afraid. No, nah, I mean, it will be a fearful sight because Lord's willing, we get beamed up. We don't know if we be a part of the elect. But it's not for you to fear where you're like, nah, I don't want nothing to do with that. No, you should seek to have something. You should want to have something to do with these things. Because these, this is your ticket out of it. This is your salvation. 
tells you that in Revelation the 15th chapter when they're on the sea of glass. How are they going to look down uh, at America being burnt? Because they're going to be up. They're going to be in the chariot. That, that cloud is going to beam them up. But like I said, I don't want to keep rambling on. But th uh, thank you, Esau. Thank you for giving you know, us content to do. Thank you. You know, like, like I said earlier, you can do nothing against the truth before the truth. So thanks for exposing the truth and making the truth. You know, all the, all, all praise, honor, and glory go unto you. How about Shem Yah of course, and Tawadi, how about Shem Yah for uh, putting the spirit on me to do this video. But thank you also, Esau, for you being a damn fool. For the Lord putting the spirit, Tawadi, how about Shem Yah for putting the spirit on Esau to be a damn fool, to just, you know, to show this truth to be the truth that it is. So Tawada, call Allah, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, for making Esau a fool. Tawada, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh. And good job, Esau. Keep being the devil that you are. And keep, you know, helping the truth as well. Because you doing this is helping the truth. And you're helping us to edify more. And to edify the elect and build them up. So good job, Esau. Keep doing what you're doing, baby boy. But I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bashem, Racha, Kutash. Double honors to the apostle, elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the whole elect. Shalom.